Honeybees live in a highly organized society that rely upon innate behaviors in each individual that allow the hive to function as a whole. But did you know that honeybees at a genetic level have so many variations that one hive can be distinctly different than the next? One hive may be more aggressive, or perhaps produce more honey, or have a better immune system. And it's understanding these genes and how they work which will be the key to the honeybee survival. Dr. Amro Zayed is a biology professor at York University. He, along with a team of graduate students, are undergoing controlled studies to learn why bees behave the way they do and how much of that is based on their genes. So we have uh, uh, several uh, avenues of research, but uh, uh, really they, it's essentially uh, they, they follow the same model. And the model is uh, we have our colonies and, and we breed them in a certain way to kind of to look to examine the you know the genetics behind a, tra a trait. So uh, you know if you're interested in immune system. Uh, we could kind of cross bees that have high immune system with bees with low immune system and see what happens in the progeny. And then once we observe our, our behavior or, or the, uh, you know, a certain trait that we're interested in, then we take it back to the lab. Lab analysis will determine what genes are responsible for certain traits in the honeybee and will allow Dr. Zayed a better understanding of how those genes get turned on or off during the bee's development. Uh, what we're finding out is that there, there is lots of uh, changes in, in DNA between, between honeybees. So uh, you know, this colony might have slightly different genetics of that colony. And, and we are seeing a, a correlation between the, if you have that gene or that variation of that gene, then you will do this behavior you know, a little bit more or a little bit less. And the idea is once we kind of identify, once we chart the honeybee genome, we could assign a certain behavior or a trait to each position. Then we could just say, okay, well, we want to make a colony that's you know, more productive, but at the same time healthy. Then we say, okay, well, let's look at our appendix, all right? So if you want to make a colony healthy, then you want to get that variation. And then we'll find bees that have that certain variation and we'll breed them with the bees that have other important or, or valuable variations that we're interested in. So that's, that's, the, that's, that's essentially, that's, that's a goal. Some of the genes that are being studied here deal with hive hygienic behavior as well as innate immune response, which determine how well the bees react to illnesses within the colony. So bees have, uh, they're social organisms, so they have two forms of immunity. One is called social immunity. Uh, in the bees, it's manifested as, you know, uh, a bee is getting sick, let's remove it from the colony or let's remove all the dead bees. They also have an innate immunity, just like ourselves. So it's not adaptive, it's not antibody-based, but they still recognize that if a foreign material is injected into them, then they could activate their immune system and it just makes the bee body a very hostile place to live if you're a microbe or, or, a, or a pathogen. So they have these two forms of immunity and what we're interested in uh, is uh, you know, what is the relationship between these two forms of immunity. So whether bees that are more, have higher social immunity, whether they have less of an innate immune system, so w whether they invest more in group immunity as opposed to individual immunity. Oh wow, look at that. Dr. Zayed and his team are also focusing on the development stages of the female bee. Specifically, at what age does a nurse bee decide to turn into a forager? So you're a nurse bee, you're taking care of the hive, and then something happens and, and you're flying and collecting pollen and nectar and, and we're looking at how uh, uh, di differences in DNA uh, combined with how differences get turned on and off in the brain. If there is a variation in that specific gene that affects that particular behavior, it may mean that some bees will be more successful in that nurse to forager transition, thus creating a more positive outcome for the hive as a whole. Because bees possess so much genetic variation, and it seems the ability to turn on and off certain genes, does this mean they are evolving? Can the honey bee adapt to an environment that is ever-changing due to our actions? Anytime there's genetic variation, and the bees have lots of genetic variation, there's always, uh, there's always evolution happening, and, and we do see some, uh, uh, some you know, isolated populations of, uh, of bees in Europe that are, are now kind of pest, uh, sorry, uh, disease-free. And it's believed that this is through nat the effects of natural selection on, on the colonies and acting to kind of make them healthier. Uh, so uh, uh, bees are definitely evolving. Uh, how much of it is, is uh, 
is because of uh, you know human activities and and how much of it is through kind of artificial selection is still kind of an, an open question but bees are definitely evolving one of our uh, first findings from the lab is uh, we looked at uh, the study to see if if genes affect both behavior of queens and workers or traits in queens and workers can we actually select on them or can can, can they evolve because the idea is that you know if you have a gene that's doing two different things in, in a queen and a worker then let's say if we want to select on, on a worker trait, then that might kind of cause some friction because it's, it's, making, it's making the queens worse. And uh, one of our first findings from the lab is to actually show that actually that, that doesn't seem to happen in the honeybees, that you could select, uh, you, could, you could have positive selection or, or artificial selection on traits uh, created by genes that work in queens and workers. As Dr. Zayed and his team learn more about the honeybee genome, they move closer to being able to breed the perfect honeybee, one that can hopefully withstand the diversity of diseases that have seen a worldwide collapse in honeybee populations, both in the wild and in apiaries. But that is not the only implication of their findings. You could do research on honeybees and that will inform how, how uh, you know, diseases happen in humans. And I'll give you a good case of that. So uh, a honeybee queen will live four years and a honeybee worker will live two to three weeks, right? It's the same DNA, same genome. Uh, so work on how, you know, what differences are between workers, or, you know, what causes the differences between queens and workers in terms of longevity could then be translated to humans. Also uh, looking at uh, the honeybee brain and, and finding out which genes are associated with, uh, with kind of like learning and memory then we could maybe address questions and uh, associated with uh, neurodegenerative diseases and so on, like Alzheimer's in, in humans. If you would like to keep up with the progress happening at Dr. Zayed's lab, you can check in with him online. For address details, please visit our website at rogerstv.com forward slash a greener york.